All right, welcome back. Before we go any further, I got to give a huge shout out to our new sponsor, The Alley. Huge. An awesome bowling alley located in the heart of downtown Charleston. 150 seat restaurant complete with 12 televisions, 260 inch projectors, full bar, American Southern inspired cuisine, eight bowling lanes, eight of them. Awesome arcade games, right? I mean, it does top notch. Vintage, vintage, great games. Anything you're looking for. Oh, yeah. Best games ever. The best part of it all, you can host your fantasy football draft party there. (laughs) The set pricing includes food. Bar package, your own private space, access to televisions, draft boards, etc. Anything you could want. It's going to be a lot of fun. Go on to the alley, thealleycharleston.com. Really excited to be partnering with them. I think we're going to record a live show at some point in the future. So look out for that. If you're in Charleston, you already know about these guys. If you're in Charleston, definitely take advantage of this. It's a great spot. It'll be an awesome place to have a a fantasy draft at. Yeah, and if you're just visiting Charleston, definitely go hit them up. It's a really fun time right there. Play some of those arcade games. Yeah, anything you can want. Get you an hourly rate of uh, bowling alley. I like that feature. It's It's a three down back. Yeah. Of, of a night. It yeah. is. You go in there, you get some bowling in. Good they, food. Legit bowling alley. It's only eight lanes, but it's small and tight, but it's a legit alley. That's why it's called the alley. Good food, lots of TVs, and the and the and the games really, they got ski ball. They got they <laughs> Pac Man. I went high pitch. They ski got ball. ski ball. <laughs> they got they got Pac Man. They got you know all the multiple classic arcade like, games. Yeah. Karate Kid. I mean, the boys are all over the place. Yeah, they got a little ping pong table outside. They got a basketball hoop outside. They do have a basketball. Got hoop. all sorts of fun stuff. I believe it's higher than ten feet though. Over Reader, at I'm the uh, shorter. <laughs> it happens when you get older. You do get shorter. All right. Well, we just want to give them a good shout out. Definitely hit them up. It's a lot of fun. We'll be there checking it out, doing a live show. I'm excited about that. Let's yeah. go ahead and get the uh, the rest of this draft started. Book I it think now. We, I think we got pick. One nine on the board. You're white, right, then you been. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. That's, that's accurate. <laughs> that's very accurate. <laughs> that sound button is right next to the draft sound, which is right there. That's, that's like your that's like your first round draft pick fumbling the ball <laughs> we right just, when he gets his first. Carry. We just had oh, ha- had our ADP of our producer yeah. his his stock just plummeted a few yeah. spots yo what if what if like if you're, you're watching the draft and the goddell was coming up there like up oh, up oh, the draft's coming in you're white then you been us. <laughs> uh we're experiencing some technical technical difficulties <laughs> wouldn't work in that setting <laughs> just don't kneel okay let's uh that's a, that's a different discussion let's uh let's get into pick one nine who's whose pick is this I've, I've, i think it's me it i think it's here. me that's casey myers i'm on here I, at cm or no i'm at where am i at <laughs> i am c myers i'm at i am c myers that's where you can find me <laughs> that's where he's at on the twitter on the twitter all right well big co just mentioned that he got bounced from the playoffs early it didn't take long for the man who bounced him from the playoffs to be picking this would be his pick Dalvin and the Chipmunks Great name. enter the arena. Obviously lost Dalvin Cook last year, so that was a bit of a bummer. Uh, I would get in further into this team here, but where we're at here in this pick, I, I think it's we're pretty much in a, in a chalk kind of phase here still. You're taking the Chevy Tahoe. And you got to go with the, with the Tahoe. Royce Freeman. Hopefully it's the leather package. Uh, <laughs> the limited. Yeah, you, no, no reason to get anything <laughs> These else. These days, if you don't have heated seats, get out of here. Or, no, and no, cooled. it's cooled seats. The That's cooled where the seats is man. really where it ups the game, especially have, down here in the South. Come on, oh, man. I ain't got no cool seats. Have you ever sat in a car with cooled seats? Oh, my. You get out, and it's not 90 degrees outside, and your ass is they freezing. Even, it's the best feeling these, in the you world. Can't even, you can't even get a Lexus these days that don't have the cooling seats, but, I mean, I can't afford one of those. But I do have a new, brand-new 1999 Subaru Outback that has, Double heated seats. Well, we all know Big Co loves his safety. Loves Subarus the stay Subaru. high in the uh, so safe all wheel drive. Whatever the safety pick is, what's what's that? Uh, all wheel drive. Yeah. Well, the F I A. Wife and I pulled off the road the other day to sit by the water and take in the fresh air, the nice breeze, and then she, you know, we're in some loose sand, and she goes, "This thing's four wheel drive." I was like, "Yes, all wheel drive. We rock. We ready. We ready. All wheel drive." Big Co's family consists of a '99 Subaru and a. 2013, 2013 Volvo, Volvo. so it's the whatever the, the safe, safety pick safety first of the year baby. that you see over there on safety the commercials first. there. Safety He's first kind of goes well, with be, this I pick mean, at one nine. Let me right. just preface the 99 Subaru Outback. I had a nice Toyota. <sighs> Try to get us back on track. Had a, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> had a nice Toyota Tacoma. That it, everybody, that's a cult following type truck. Had to sell that, buy a duplex. Things couldn't, happened. Got it. Got it. Had, to, had, to start, up a good deal. had to start my retirement, 
you know, had to start my retirement plan, had to sell my Toyota, buy a duplex, picked up the 99 Subaru for two grand. We're ready to roll over here. Just, uh, what comes with that Subaru is a nonstop single of Melissa Etheridge <laughs> playing. <laughs> What you should have done was get the Chevy Tahoe. What You should have got the Chevy Tahoe. No way I'm driving a Chevy Tahoe. I'm not stopping at the gas station that no, often. I'm trying to get us back to goddamn Royce Freeman. Whoa. All right. So, well, Hot without further heavy. ado, Royce Freeman <laughs> is my pick for Dalvin and the Chipmunks driving in a Chevy Tahoe. Right. That's going to be the new team name. Maybe he could change his team name. If he changes Dalvin his team and name. the te- Chevy Tahoes? That doesn't make sense. All right. Royce Freeman and the Chipmunks? With Sometimes you Cook. swing and a miss. What are you going to yeah. do? You can't win them all. Strike out. Anyway, obviously, like I said, this is kind of a chalky pick. We've been chalk throughout. You can kind of dice these guys up however you want, much like these next couple of guys we're going to end the round with. I chose Royce Freeman here. I didn't really take into account his roster. Um, I, I Like we stated before, I think Ross Lilla. I think Royce Freeman is a very safe pick here. I don't think there's anything sexy about him, which is how we got on the Tahoe bit here. Yep. Um, I think he can catch the ball. He can run between the tackles. He's got enough speed. He's shifty. Sometimes he has some power to his game. It was one of the knocks that I had about this, that you would like to see a back of his stature, maybe have some more power at times. But then he did play through a shoulder injury, so sure. I can make some excuses for him there. And then when you got 79 receptions in your career as a college over the college right. course, that's very strong and very appealing. Yep. So just to talk a little Broncos football here, uh, last, last season they were eighth in attempts with 457, 12th in total yards with 1,852 Tied for 18th in average, 4.1. You're welcome, C.J. Anderson. Um, but then 24th in rushing touchdowns with eight. We know this offense was moderately inefficient uh, for the most part, especially in the red zone last year. But that's um, still impressive. They were very committed to the run, eighth in rushing attempts. Well, well the attempts, because the wheels fell off the quarterback situation. We touched on this last week talking about Christian McCaffrey, but since this is Royce Freeman and he just got drafted by the Broncos, I think it bears for repeating – the first couple of weeks of the season, you got Trevor Simeon being, yeah. you know, on top of the world. They got a couple of wins, and then a couple of weeks later, he's benched. I mean, like literally, wheels fell off of this offense. They bring in Brock to start a game or two. Yeah. Trevor Sim- Tre- Trevor Simeon's out, and then well, Paxton, Paxton, out. Paxton, Paxton Lynch, Lynch comes in. in. That ain't working. A mess. It's a Mike big mess. McCoy gets fired after a six game losing streak. Yeah, I, the head coach Vance Joseph wants to run the ball. I like Vance in uh in in Bronco Town over here. Um, C.J. Anderson was ninth overall with 1,007 yards with a 4.1 average. Um, the God's TDs, over four. The TDs were a killer for C.J. Anderson last year, um, and the rushing offense in the red zone was stagnant. Um, well said. So that's kind of where we're at. There's a, there's a decent nucleus of an O-line here mm-hmm. for this team. Um, you have Garrett Bowles, who was a, dra- a draft pick last year, who was, was a little banged up throughout the season but, but played pretty well. Obviously, you have Ron Leary at, at left guard. Bowles is at left tackle, so that's that's pretty solid. Um, and then they traded for Jared Valdir. Right, they got Valdir. He's on the right side of this line. Hasn't played great the last couple of years, but he's been hurt. So for sure, you, you're looking he's for a, a big. He's a veteran. Big bounce back from him, but he's been pretty solid. He was acquired in a trade for a sixth rounder. Then you go to the center, who as a rookie, I believe he was he was named he was an All Pro. I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure, but as a rookie, he crushed it. A uh, little, not quite as good of a of a secondary year, but that happens. So from from left tackle to left guard to center, this is a very strong unit. Now they picked up, as you mentioned, uh, Valdir. So they're looking for a nice, you know, rounded out on the right side. Right, plug plug the old hole in the dike on the on the right side, and then they're looking for the fifth round pick, um, Connor McGovern of last year to step up um, and and be the. The, the other part right of this guard they got him penciled in there right over. at right guard so they're looking for a, a player basically they're looking for this right side of the line to catch up to the left side of this line which is a, a pretty strong uh asset of the denver broncos i'll take a strong side of the line instead of an average across right give me give me a couple I, guys i can run behind i don't hate that and and you know ron leary and bowls and, and the center solid solid yeah. so okay. we'll, and but hopefully it, Val, valdir can bounce back and th- they didn't play that well, last year they were graded out as the twenty third ranked offensive line per yeah. PFF. Um, they gave up the like second the most. The wheels were off of this thing. They gave up the second most sacks with thirty two and the fourth most pressures with two hundred seven. So they they tried to make some improvements, maybe get a little healthier. 
can almost say that about the, any. The Broncos line just offense as a whole was just a mess and atrocious, Their whole offense and it was, was a just mess. up and down and all over the place. You thought the defense was going to be really good, and it, it showed up when it felt like it. Right, and that that has since been kind of picked apart a little bit. But they they revamped here, and I like what the Denver Broncos did here and through the draft. They got a pass rusher, and then they went offense offense with Royce Freeman and Cortland Sutton, who we'll talk about in a second. I love those three picks, man. You bring in Chubb on the D line, which is awesome to pair with Von Miller, and then the two offensive weapons that you just said. That's good, good, good start in the right direction for the Broncos. So I guess the biggest question here is the incumbent uh, pair of mostly Booker. They have D'Angelo Henderson, who was a later round pick, but I believe Booker was a fourth or fifth round pick a few years ago. Who, I, I, I don't, I don't dislike Booker by any means. I liked him at all. Booker. Um, does, so does anybody have think that Royce Freeman isn't going to come right in and, and, and get to be the lead dog in this clubhouse? I mean, I don't think they're going to hand it to him on a silver platter. I mean, if, if they would have taken him higher in the draft, maybe they could have, you know, made their stance with their draft capital. Um, but you know, I, he's high enough to get plenty of opportunity and i just feel like Devonte booker's looked plenty good in some spots he hasn't looked good in other spots but again you take you gotta injury take too. some injuries and and just there was again like you jay may jay wayne mentioned the quarterback sacks and pressures and stuff like that from the o-line like it all kind of works together when it's working to get together right sure, exactly. it works together and when it's working together wrong it works together you don't so, know what's a fugazi and what's real here. exactly like a quarterback uh, if a quarterback's holding the ball too long he can create his own pressures i don't care how good the offensive line sure. blocks and if you got a couple of guys that are playing good but two, you know it takes five to have an offensive line you could have two big gaping holes and he could get big getting crushed from one side so which obviously would have been the right side so i I feel like Royce Freeman jumps right into a team here who you you bring in the quarterback from the Vikings. Case Keenum. You bring in Case Keenum. He's on a team-friendly deal, but what can you do for me, Case Keenum, because we didn't want to put too much stock in an unknown quarterback with a rookie and, and go that route and trade up to be able to buy one I think one they tried, year. but it, they didn't have to. Right, right. Well, if it works out, if Case, Ke- Case Keenum played great last year, if he can play – 90% of that this year, the Broncos just won the quarterback free agency market. And a part of Case's game, Obviously I think not that's Kirk Cousins. underrated, they is, tried. is his mobility and, and able to create a little bit and, and sc- kind of have a scramble drill involved. So even if the offensive line isn't quote-unquote great, which I think they're better than as advertised on paper, he, well, I think he has a little bit to that kind of in his game to to really help this offense move around well even if even if the viking system would have been running on all cylinders last year it was still case keenum's first real shot at it so it's not like he With had a really lot, no pressure that, to be like who's coming in i gotta watch my back every well, place under a microscope well he didn't have that but he did but i mean i'm saying that's like his first time with not having that yeah exactly and it's first still it, doesn't have that in denver well but i'm not well, really though Chad Adam, Kelly, I guess. Is. Adam Thielen didn't throw the ball to himself, and he had a terrific season. Yeah. Stephon Diggs had some monster games, and those backs got fed, and the tight end, Kyle Rudolph, like when you got that that many guys scoring fantasy points, the quarterback's doing something right. I mean, the defense helps out a lot, but sure. the Broncos' defense isn't too far removed from being one of the better units no in doubt. the league. No doubt about it. So I feel like I feel like Royce Freeman comes into a really good situation. Yes, there is a couple of backs here that, that are capable, and I definitely like – that I like the game that um, the veteran running back has, but uh, Booker Devonte Booker. I like the I like all his catches in college. He did come out a little bit on the older side. Doesn't bother me a ton, but if it doesn't work out for the first couple of years, then all of a sudden you're old and you haven't played any NFL football really. Sure. So I think that he does have a little competition, much more quality competition than Rojo walks into to play against. But I don't see any reason why Royce Freeman can't come out and if he. Obviously, he played. He's versatile and feels safe. He play, He's versatile. He feels safe. He played ridiculously good football at Oregon for years. Like it wasn't just a one year breakout. Right. He put it on tape, and he put it on tape for three solid years in a e- row. Even in even in the year where he was down in sixteen, it v- wasn't the worst ever. It but, wasn't, and and, and he was, was playing. There's a through, lot of excuses you can make right. for him on that 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 year. Was, he dealt with injuries, which I think you're about to say the team yeah. fell apart and. It, totally revamped everything they had going on going into the next year and that was why he didn't come out in 16 he waited another year and it's a smart move on it but one of the reasons why i said i don't i would have taken royce freeman for my team last pick over dj moore is because if if he could be he could be in for monster workload if he takes that spot because he is a three down back he's proven it 
He can do everything you want him to do, right? He He's not flashy. He doesn't have the breakaway speed. And there's a reason why it, that he's not everybody's favorite running back in this class. That's, that's why he's back here. It's been creeping up as of late. It definitely but has been creeping he, up. And, and we gave him a lot of love pre-draft. We gave, pre-draft, we were giving him love for sure. But that's, you know, he, he is the Swiss Army knife. And if he can get in there and, and take that three down roll, that there's a three down roll there to be had. It's not like Devo, either Devonke, Devontae Booker could earn a three down roll because he could do that, or Freeman could earn a three down roll. My, my only problem with it is last year, you just, there was times where CJ Anderson should have just stayed in the game and been the guy. And they just cut, it seemed like they were just forcing Booker in the game and forcing Jamal Charles in the game. And both of them were mostly fine when they got the ball, but it just seemed like, I thought C.J. Anderson could handle more work than you were giving him, and, and C.J. Anderson got a fair amount of work last year, and he was decent doing so. I'm not. Oh, and the game. This isn't were, about this isn't about C.J. A, a crusade for C.J. Anderson. It's just about the way that they were using their running backs. Makes me a little hesitant to say that I think that he'll jump right in there, and they they want to give somebody a three down roll. Well, just to to play devil's advocate with that point is that. They probably, I mean, the wheels had fallen off. They weren't going to make the playoffs. I mean, it was. We're talking. They knew they were going to have to pay CJ Anderson four plus million dollars this year, which oh, well, they probably is, didn't want to do. I understand right? the cut. So on they the probably end. no, but so I mean, that's probably why they wanted to see what they had in these other running backs to a point last year when they could have been giving CJ Anderson more. Well, work. this was. I mean, this was all season long. It fluctuated all over the place. What you were doing with CJ Anderson is my problem. Like when there's there's a game log here where CJ Anderson when he has fifteen or. 20 carries like there was they were more on the win side than the loss side correct that was mostly the first three or four games of the season when they were winning he was getting 20 carries and it was working out and then the wheels just fell off six game losing streak fire offensive coordinator yeah now you now you're picking up another running back here i mean to bring it back to royce freeman i i I really like the kid i i think i had him ranked a lot lower than or, or lower than some of the other guys i was listening to to us break down royce freeman and and i was listening to myself talk about all the bullet points of why he's good and then i ended that breakdown with i could see you taking him over a lot of these guys and then they ended up doing that in the nfl draft and and now he's, he's rising up the rankings and, and you mentioned he doesn't have the breakaway speed but he does have some deceptive speed for a big guy like we tried sure. to allude to that pre pre combine and then he came out and ran a four five four which is pretty solid for a 230 pound dude oh well, well that's what that's, true. that's what did it that they, they were like oh well, he can run a four or five and look at him right. so of course i gotta move him up my board here exactly maybe gonna, i underestimated him he's not gonna burn past corners that. you know or a fast safety but he can still get big chunk plays and and what he make what he lacks in long speed he makes up for with quick shifty feet rock solid vision and then the pass protection has probably got to be one of the biggest things the broncos saw on this cat yeah but but there's a reason and the pass catching ability he ha- he possesses the talent to right. not have to take him off the field right right but but for me there's there's still a reason why he's the eighth running back for me and he's not ahead of any of these other guys and and why I'm fine taking a swing on DJ Moore ahead of him is because he does have Devonte Booker there the the Broncos you know did work multiple backs into their sets last year and and I'm I think Case Keenum deserves a lot more respect than he's ever been given but but it's still it's still hard coming off the year that they had to just just flip that around and so while he's definitely the last of the backs of of any good back to take so if you're looking for a back and you're there at 8 you probably got to you got to take him cuz you're not going to get that solid of drafts of a stab. that draft that being big code did it was 7 8 straight running backs yeah yeah that's that's what i that's right. what i mean yeah, yeah. eight for me, he's the eighth best running back, and if you want to take him at number eight, that's fine, but I can't really nudge him up above anybody else just because of basically everything we said about these other guys. I mean, and look at it, at the end of the day, he could be sitting here right next, right below Saquon Barkley talking about like he's had the longest, best career of, of all these guys. Oh, he's definitely certainly not out of the realm of possibilities at all. He's definitely got the most consistent. But I'm with you. I'm with you 100. percent I wasn't saying that to. He's definitely got the most consistently good game log outside of Nick Chubb's injury misses. Like yeah. if Nick Chubb doesn't get hurt, nobody's got a game log like his. Yeah. And for fear of that's got to make you feel good of starting a whole new conversation here. Like you said, he could end up being one of the best backs in this class. That's kind of what makes this whole first round kind of difficult because once you get to the point where, like, I know the first four guys that I really want and I'm taking those in that order and, and I'm not probably I'm probably not trading out of those spots because I want those guys. But when you get to five and, and you really want carry-on, you, you trade back. 
because you don't need to take carry on a five. Right. Sure. We, 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 and, we and got you, to that part. Yep. You, you trade back because because you don't mind whoever the eighth running back is because that sure. eighth running back could end up being one of the better running right. backs. So you, you if you if you have a pick at five, six, or seven, you you trade back. And it's just like Big Co said multiple times. There's going to be people outside in this draft that outside of those top four or even if you want to narrow it down to three, somebody loves each and every one of the next eight or nine guys. And exactly. if you're indifferent right. and they'll give you and a you second don't really care which one you can make a ton of money moving back. Exactly. Right. right. Which we and did. still get your guy. If you if you're indifferent, but and, you're and like, maybe, I, not, maybe you don't get your guy, but you get somebody else that you pad right next to your guy. Because well, you, you can't think, if you're at one eight, you can't not get a good running back if you like these guys. It's true. You know, so yeah. one eight's a great spot to be at. One eight's a good good spot. One seven's not a good super spot. Flex. Super flex is this all trickles down. Yeah, super flex you know, makes a little it even, further. First right. round gifts even deeper and more fun. Right. Yeah. I agree. All right. Well that will that wrap up uh old old Royce Tahoe Freeman? Yeah. <laughs> let's uh let's get on to pick one ten here. <laughs> 